All right, let's get this last round of critiques done for the camouflage emotion challenge. So although, although these two are two totally different styles, I like to always put them put things that are similar content together to see how people did things well or decided to do different things. So with respect to this one, I'm happy to see that you have sort of abandoned the You've taken the advice from the last critique, which was to abandon the dark black lines on the outside. And I think that I had suggested that that would open you up to some new possibilities, I think. And I think you really succeeded with that down here in the, I don't know if it's, I don't know what you'd call it, the seaweed. Like the seaweed, the seaweed is phenomenal. It's really good. And so not having like that black line on the outside, I think, I think that's helping you there. Where I think you need to improve is when you don't have a black outline, that's when you really need to emphasize the shaping and the molding. So again, we've seen the same problem with like many projects and the other critiques on this, on this challenge is people are drawing things very flat and you're not rounding out, rounding out these edges. So it's not going to look that great, me doing this quickly. But I do think it's the same problem that we've seen in multiple examples. You really need to round out some of these things. Some of these algaes could be pushed back a little bit to get a little bit more three-dimensionality. I don't know about algae, the seaweed. I don't like that. I do like this. I'm just trying to give it just like a little bit more, a little bit more depth. Again, like hard to do quickly and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing like I'm not doing individual areas very well. There, I feel like that gives the piece way more depth. I would, oh, that's kind of fun. I prefer that up there. Let me see if I can. Yeah, just trying to give that a bit more, again, like a bit more pop. Let's see. They're definitely different. I actually like your blue colors more than my blacks. Let me see if I can shut those off. Or actually, see if I can fix that. That doesn't seem to be doing anything. Why is this not doing anything? Oh, this is kind of fun. I like yours the best. Let's try just this. I do think that's better. So I kept the blues, but I put some darker blacks underneath and I just rounded out that sea dragon. But this is a big step up for you. I, I really like this. I think you did a great job. This is fantastic. Good work. So this one did do a good job of rounding it out. So the, the body is much more rounded evenly. The seaweed here is really good too. Like the seaweed is, both of the, your seaweeds are really good. I, I really enjoy this piece. 
honestly, I don't think I can improve anything. Like uh, I'm thinking, like you might be able to. Oh, I have an idea. Okay, here's an idea. Okay, so what I did is I I put some some deeper foliage in the background, and I popped the some highlights on the seahorse, but bare or but very minimal. It's very difficult to improve this piece. I think it's essentially perfect. And so it's up for grabs whether you like this better or this better. Both are essentially a 10 out of 10. This is the only thing I could conceive of that might make this piece a little bit better. Otherwise, it's essentially perfect. Great piece. I love how the um, the seaweed is like see-through. I think that's amazing. Super good. Great work. All right, this one, like this one is literally, it's just like, it's just not enough effort at, at this point in the class, like this late in the semester, like it's just not enough effort. You're just not making enough marks. You're not making enough attempt at texture. You're not even, you're not thinking about a good placement of the text or good fonts. Like I don't dig the font. The leaves are flat. There's no texture. There's no shadows. So like, like, let me just list all the things that this doesn't have. Good text. Uh, no texture. Okay, so wait. There's not good text. No texture. No shadows. No... insufficient veins, bad background, no contrast. Like this was just a killer opportunity for shadows. Again, like I was just, I, I just am frustrated if a student has an opportunity to do something cool or to make it way better and doesn't take that opportunity. You could do really cool shadows with this weird caterpillar, but not even an attempt at shadows. No highlights, except this weird line that I don't know like what that is or how that fits. Like if it was a caterpillar, the line should kind of look like this. It shouldn't be like a straight line. Like it should be something like this. Like I could literally like chicken scratch on this thing and probably make it like better. Like a more interesting, intriguing piece. Like I would have done shadows underneath these leaves. Abouts in this area. I'm not doing this in Photoshop, so it's not going to look that good. Well, like I would have done some shadows like this at bare minimum. I would have put the text up here, short and and tiny. And I would have done crazy complex shadows underneath this caterpillar. Like just not enough effort. This one, I feel like the proportions are off. I can't tell if it's like a caterpillar or a snake. Maybe the proportions are on. I guess I don't know because I don't know what kind of caterpillar it is. But it feels like the head's too big. No shadows. There's There's no contrast because the whole image is too dark. Like there's no lights. No highlights. The whole thing is just too dark. There's no texture on the caterpillar. And the background, the background, the background is bad and it's not a good choice of background color. Like maybe you're trying to go for the camouflage and so you're going for like low contrast, but I don't think it succeeds as like an interesting piece. Also, like if you're only going to do the caterpillar and that's all you're going to do, just grab the caterpillar and make the caterpillar literally like the whole size of the piece. Just expand it. 
but like these are all things that we taught shadows shading and contrast highlights texture like we taught all those things so i just say I, i'm just not sure why we're not seeing those at this point in the class this one i like a lot i i think this is a huge level up for you here's a good here's a really good example again a comparison of sort of like this and this this actually is way more interesting now that i do, did some chicken scratch on it <laughs> a comparison of this and this to this so all three of these are relatively like simple um, compositions. They're simple in a sense of, it, in, in uh, some sense they're almost minimalist, right? Okay, but this is really the only minimalist one that is succeeding, this one. So here's a, like a case example for those other students. You really want to look at this as a success of how you can succeed with minimalism. If you really only have minimalist effort in you at the time, like this is really, this is really attractive piece. And the key to the attractiveness is the organization of the composition. Like the negative space and the positive space is just perfectly organized and it's very attractive. And the crayfish or the lobster, I'm not sure which way, which it is, but it's just, it's done really well. And the eye is, is really attractive. Like the eye is done really well too. And you have enough molding on this where it's round enough. It's a little bit flat on the edge. Like you could mold this out much more and it would be a little bit better. And you could mold out this lobster a little bit more and it would be a little bit better. But since it's minimalist, like it works. So like this is a 10 out of 10 for me. This is a really good piece. It's colors are amazing using blue and orange. Blue and orange are opposite colors. And so like it's really like popping. The signature fits well. The black background fits well. And then there's like a little no bleed edge. It's like a, just a hair off white. It's just really good. It's just really, really good decision making from a visual standpoint and a minimalist perspective. So like, this is really stunning to me. I think you did a great job. I'm excited to see more from you. Here, this one, the it's just insufficient fur texture. Like the, the eyes are good. The eyes are good. That's good. You did good job on the eyes. Although I think you could push that highlight more. For sure, you could push the highlight more. Um. And these dark black lines in the cat, I don't think they're helping you. It makes it look just a little bit too cartoony. If you want it to look less cartoony and more real, you got to get rid of these dark black lines. That's what's making it cartoony. I don't think the ears go deep enough. You could make these go deeper by having it darker black in there. Like probably some darker black in here. Um and the real problem for this for me is the um is the fur like you're just not doing enough to capture the fur texture it's just kind of like like you're you're trying to get the fur texture by like doing this that's not the way that you're going to get a good fur texture although if you're going to go with that like maybe you should have just like gone all in and like done some like cross hatching and stuff and just to like maybe make this just a little bit better like you might have just leaned into the cross hatching. I don't know. I'm I'm just kind of experimenting. Like I don't know if this is actually going to make it look better or not. What's with this weird like cutoff? I would have extended it at least like that. Just quickly. Like you could make this a lot darker there to get some more three dimensionality. I don't quite I don't quite visually understand the folds of the ear. So I guess like more effort could be done to clarify the space inside of the ears. Your eyes are good. I don't have any complaints with the eyes. That's good to see. Ooh, a shadow would have been cool. So you could have done like a a cool shadow, something like this. 
I think the background's clever. Like doing the magazine thing. But I would have put I would have put a shadow and then I would have brought those words on top of that shadow. Like I would have put a shadow, something like this. Although I would have made it smooth, not chicken scratch shadow. I'm just doing it quick. So you get the idea. But like even that, like that's already like better, and I'm literally just like chicken scratching it. If you're gonna like if you're gonna do you you like you're trying to do the fur with a crosshatch, like if you're gonna do that, then just lean into it and do more. But that's not really a super successful way to capture the texture of fur. So great work on the eyes, clever work on the background. I think that's a clever, clever, clever visual design, but I think you need to lean into it more. One thing I think that this is a, just a little bit awkward for this one is I think that these two birds fit within the same universe. You know, they're a little bit kind of like scratchy. This bird I feel is like really smooth and uber realistic. So I don't feel like all three birds occupy the same universe. I feel like this bird is in a more uber realistic universe and these birds are more in sort of like a sketchy drawing universe. So I just think there's a little bit of an inconsistency in style. But I think you're doing a fantastic job of capturing emotion. Like this one is definitely like threatening, warding off. This one, I know we had a conversation. I feel like it's like a little bit neurotic or a little bit nervous. Um, and this one feels to me kind of just like relaxed, like at peace. So I think you're doing a great job of capturing emotion. And it's cool that you're using the colors to sort of like reflect the emotion. So good color choice, using colors to sort of enhance or augment the emotion. And I know I had a conversation about that early when we introduced colors, that every color has an emotion. And so it's cool that you're using that to your advantage. That's very clever. Good technique. The other thing I'm not sure about is I'm not sure about the blurry shadow. Because if you have sharp lines, I think you want a sharp shadow. So like, let's see. This is going to be bad because I'm not in Photoshop. But... It might be hard. It, it, yeah, it might not work. Or would the shadow be more like? You might experiment. Like, I'm not sure I can improve it. But my question is whether or not a, a sharper shadow might help you out a little bit. Not quite sure. I'm trying to figure it out. And the problem with this one is there's no shadow in this one, but there's shadow in this one and this one. So it's kind of weird in a sense of like, here's two great opportunities for shadows. And then this one like doesn't have a shadow. So I think there's a subtle, subtle, better decision-making in composition, but, but this was fantastic. Um, like they're not real criticisms, just like some things to think about. All right, that's it.